welcome everyone good afternoon and uh, thank you very much for attending the last session of the summit with me i know it's almost the lunch time and the topic is just perfect like security which will put you <laughs> right to the sleep right right from the beginning so yeah so thank you for being uh, here and uh, let's get it going so uh, we are today we are going to talk about uh, Apache Kafka and the security options which are available in Apache Kafka. I am Vipin. I work for Hortonworks uh, as a senior product specialist. Okay, this is uh, a little bit about my background. I've been involved in security since long time now. I have been into the Kerberos teams, in storage, now in Hadoop domain. And uh, yeah, I've done a uh, whole lot of things which are not so important at this point. So. Yeah, so let's see what we are going to cover today. So we are going to cover the all the security models which are available, why they are available, what are what are the uh, what is the uh, what are the things that they are trying to solve, and how we can use them. Most importantly, how we troubleshoot them, because that is the uh, one of the most. Uh, problematic things that uh, uh, our customers run into that they enable security they don't know how to uh, troubleshoot them and uh, that's where i want to strike first okay so and then we'll uh, have a look at the couple of like uh, tips and tricks do's and don'ts that uh, is coming from the support trenches so we have been seeing this on and off like with so many kafka customers now so we'll have a look at them that uh, how to avoid getting into the like the uh, very basic mistakes and how to get the Kafka ready for your production systems. Okay, so before we get into the all the security options which are available, let's pay attention to why do we need security? What are we trying to secure uh, when it comes to Kafka? So what we are trying to secure here is we are actually trying to secure the communication between the user and the Kafka system communication not only means the data transmission also the user authentication and authorization so authentication once again is uh, determining if the user is a valid user if the user is the one who he or she is claiming to be that's the author authentication part that we are going to uh, cover then authorization once you have the user authenticated what do you do with that you use that username or the group name to make a rule which will uh, let uh, the system decide whether to give access to this user or not so that's part of the authorization which is uh, as good as trying to answer that uh, does the authenticated user have access to this resource or not right so that covers the authorization and what we are also covering is the communication between the different subsystems or different parties inside Kafka system which is like brokers the clients like consumer producers communication between the Kafka uh, two Kafka brokers which is the interbroker uh, uh, protocol communication and also the communication between the broker and the zookeeper okay so these are the things that we are trying to uh, answer or these are the things that we are trying to secure by all the available options that we are going to see later. What we are not securing is the data encryption on the disk. So whatever is the data that is used in the Kafka system, which is stored with the broker, we are in the message queues, we are actually not uh, trying to secure them. Kafka does not provide anything for that. For that, if you want to uh, encrypt those things, you need to take uh, care, uh, you need to take help of the third party tools like the LUKS or uh, KMS or anything else right, that deals with the data at rest encryption. So you can do that. Okay. So this is uh, what and what we are not uh, trying to secure in Kafka. Okay. So let's have a look into the Kafka security models which are available. So the first one is pretty basic which is the plain text. This is the model which is available out of the box when you install Kafka for the first time you will uh, have a scheme which is called plain text and this will be used to uh, communicate and your all the uh, 
communication are between the user broker and the uh, clients kafka clients are happening on this right meaning there is no what what do you, what do you mean by plain text right plain text means there is no user authentication there is no authorization there is no wire encryption right so in short there is no security so this is the the most basic form of security model which kafka provides out of the box which is just there for the uh, as a kind of a uh, to help you s uh, get started with the kafka right so once you uh, uh, like to help you uh, play a little bit more with kafka uh, messaging system broker clients consumer producer so just to you know just to get you the feel of what is it inside kafka so it is good for that it is definitely and absolutely not recommended for forget production not even for the dev or test environment okay so we don't recommend this no one should be even using that this is absolutely good only till the proof of concept level okay now that we don't uh, so, so plain text uh, does not support anything to do with the security so let's take it one more level up right which is the another security model called ssl in ssl like uh, everyone uh, should be knowing ssl will use uh, the help of x.509 certificate which is the public and private certificates to do the uh, host based authorization okay so what we are doing is if there are two node let's say a kafka client and a kafka broker are trying to communicate to each other over the ssl then it is going to make use of the individual node certificate to confirm the identity of identity of the other party so the client will verify who the server is whether it is having a correct certificate a valid certificate or not and server is going to validate whether the client is having a right certificate or not right so this is the thing that we are getting with the ssl security model mind you ssl security model is not doing anything about the user authentication and since there is no authentication obviously you cannot have the authorization because you uh, don't uh, ident if you cannot identify your user you cannot uh, write any mm, any useful authorization rules as well right so so there is no authentication there is no authorization and what we are getting is the certificate based host authorization okay and how do we configure that so in order to configure ssl uh, security model you need to configure your all the parties individual node with the ssl trust store and key stores okay so that is kind of a prerequisite if you want to use ssl for any subsystem not only kafka right so you need to have a you need to generate few jks you need to generate trust store key store and then place them in the kafka configuration the important thing to notice is when you are using uh, the when you are defining this in the kafka property on the broker side you will be using the listener and give the uh, kafka scheme as ssl and on the client side you will be using security dot protocol equal to ssl along with other trust store and key store parameters but this is the important bit okay so it's definitely better than plain text okay Be whereas the plain text was not having anything at all this is at least uh, at least gives you uh, uh, ability to verify the host and your http channel right your communication channel is now secure by the use of ssl so well it's better definitely better than uh, plain text but not quite there because you still cannot do user authentication authorization so let's bump up to the next one which is the sasl plain text okay so sasl is actually the authentication mechanism used by kafka to do various kind of uh, to support various flavor of authentication okay so as you can see when you use sasl you can actually define the underlying mechanism in sasl that what kind of security you want what kind of authentication you want whether you want users to be authenticated as uh, like based on username and password 
or do you want to use the Kerberos ticket or do you want to use uh, something uh, which is less uh, very uh, 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 lightly used which is the scram which is the solitaire password based authentication mechanism okay so you need to still you still need to define the uh, username and passwords and then generate the solitaire passwords at the broker side and your uh, clients will be uh, giving a password and that's when it is going to get uh, verified and authenticated on the broker right so this is kind of the uh, model with the scram scram is available in two flavors scram 256 and scram 512 based on the strength of the uh, hashing algorithm that you want to use okay so now things are interesting with sassel plain text what we have what we have here is the uh, ability to authenticate your user now that your users are authenticated you can take it to the next level which is the authorization now you're talking right now we can actually say okay hey this is the user who can uh, do uh, who can access and this is the user who cannot access okay how do you do that you uh, take help of the native Kafka ACL which are available right out of the box with the Kafka installation or you can uh, make use of the uh, Apache Ranger okay so Apache Ranger is a pretty robust centralized authorization system which can help you to uh, set the policies that if user is so and so or if a user is part of so and so groups then you can or you cannot have uh, access to such so and so Kafka topics right so this these this is the policy that you can define in Ranger and that will uh, that will decide or that will take care of all the authorization for you okay so this is good so now we know with sassel plain text you have the authentication which was missing you have the authorization which was also missing from the last two security models right but one thing which is still open is the communication channel so even if you are using kerberos authentication username and password uh, any any means of authentication first four so even if you are using them you are still sending your secrets and your data over the wire in plain text okay so that is the caveat with the sassel plain text so you are kind of secure but not there yet not still not ready for production definitely right because your secrets and the data is being uh, transferred over plain text so uh, we will take it to the next level with the next uh, security model which is the SASL underscore SSL but before going to that just wanted to highlight that uh, what do you need to configure this it's pretty simple what you need is a uh, pre-configured authentication mechanism what do you mean what do I mean by pre-configured so pre-configured I mean that you need to set up any kind of these authentication uh, methods beforehand before you get into Kafka security so you need to, so you need to be having a, a working Kerberos system or username and passwords or scram based system before you get into uh, securing Kafka so you need to have that that's why it says pre-configure authentication mechanism which is outside Kafka then you uh, on the broker side you set the listeners like uh, you with the scheme like sassel plain text and on the client side you need to give security dot protocol equal to sassel plain text okay so this is telling that this is the protocol that I want to uh, use while connecting to broker and one more new thing that is available here is the mechanisms right so these are the mechanisms that you have a choice of uh, various sassel mechanism that our model supports and you can give them okay you want to use plain or GSS API meaning Kerberos or you can use scram sharp 256 or uh, scram chart 512 okay so this is how you use the sassel plain text now we know that uh, the communication channels are still open so let's plug that hole as well right so what how do we do that we uh, uh, do that by using the one of the uh, like the topmost security protocol security uh, model which is available which is the sassel ssl as the name suggests it does bring all the good part of the sassel the previous one sassel plain text and adds a ssl to that 
So the only thing which was uh, not available in the previous one was the uh, data uh, in-flight data security, and that we are uh, plugging it with the SSL. So now our communication channels is, is also secure. Our users are authenticated and authorized, so we are good. Okay. What do we need to, like what all do we need to set this up is basically uh, uh, all, both the things that are, that are the cornerstone of this uh, security model, which is like the pre-configured authentication mechanism, which is setting up Kerberos in most of the cases, and you need to set up the certificate trust stores and key stores as well. Sorry. So for each uh, uh, certificate trust store and key store for each brokers and client. Okay, and how do you set this up? Almost pretty uh, uh, similar to the previous one. You set the listener, but this time SASL underscore SSL. And in the protocol, sorry, in the protocol, you give again SASL underscore SSL mechanisms, the same ones. So um, all the uh, mechanisms which were available previously. So, okay. so. Now we have, so these are the four models, plain text, SSL, SASL underscore plain text, and SASL underscore SSL. These are the four models which are available. So we can actually put them in a nice little chart. So which gives you a single shot of what is being offered in each of the security models, right? So this, at one glance, you can actually see that uh, based on the what kind of infrastructure you have, whether you have ability to do SSL or not, whether you have <coughs> ability to authenticate user or not based on Kerberos, plain username, password, scram. Depending on what kind of infrastructure you have, you can pick and choose which is the best suitable uh, security model for you. One point to note is these security models were introduced in Kafka 0 0.9.0 and above. Okay, so if you are anything, if you are at anything below that, I'm sorry, you don't get to get all these options. There was no security, so you need to be uh, somewhere above, on or above 0 0.9. Okay, so as you can clearly see, the SSL checks all the checkboxes, and uh, the SASL SSL that is, checks all the checkboxes and gives you ability to authenticate the user, authorize him as well, and encrypt the information over the wire. Okay, so this is, that's why this is the uh, most recommended for the production system. And you have, there's no, al there's no other alternative. You need to use the SASL SSL if you want to really secure your data and the user authentication, right? Okay, so since I'm from support, so I know whenever I show this slide to anyone or whenever I describe them uh, uh, this all the models uh, anyone the first question that I, I get is okay I have enabled security now nothing is working how many of you have seen that <laughs> yeah I'm sure I'm sure pretty uh, pretty much everyone who has enabled security they will uh, uh, complain about that okay I enabled security I enabled Kerberos or SSL is just not working how do what do I do how do I troubleshoot so the first thing that you uh, should be knowing is what are the tools available in your arsenal to troubleshoot uh, these kind of issues. So using these uh, options, you can actually troubleshoot the individual subsystems. Like if you have problem with the authentication, you can use the debug for the Kerberos authentication, right? Uh, that too, not only for the broker, for also for the client. Then you have problem with SSL. You can enable the uh, SSL debug, right? And then there are a few couple of more that we'll have a look. Okay, so how do you uh, enable uh, the Kerberos debug for client? That you need to, since uh, Kafka SASL is implemented with the use of the Java APIs, so everything that we are doing for debugging is based on JVM debugging, right? So how do we do that? For JVM uh, debugging of Kerberos, you need to pass a JVM flag to uh, the Kafka uh, client, which is the Sun Security KRB 5.debug equal to true, and you need to set this up on your console or in Ambari and restart your client, and you'll start seeing a few more interesting information, which will uh, 
tell you what is wrong with your authentication. Okay, if you want to do the same for broker, there's a little bit uh, extra step that you need to do because of the Ambari bug that I found like last night, uh, 2 a.m. that uh, there's a bug, and because of that, you cannot actually use the same method for to enable the Kafka. Uh, uh, broker uh, debug, so you need to do a little bit uh, uh, things a little bit differently, which is you log in as a SS, uh, you log in as a Kafka user, and then you set up this uh, command line or not uh, this environment variable, which is the Kafka Kerberos params, and you give. So this is this is what we are trying to give this one Kerberos debug for the Kerberos debugging, and this Java XNet debug is for SSL debugging. So you need to choose that which one you're trying to debug based on that you need to decide uh, you need to define that and you need to uh, start the kafka server manually so due to some bug in most probably in ambari uh, when you start when you set this up and start uh, the kafka broker uh, ambari it will not let you uh, it will not print anything in the log any in anything in the debug log right so in order to get that the one of the kind of a workaround that I found is you set this up, don't start it via Ambari, start it via uh, command line Kafka server start sh daemon server property, and you'll start getting a Kafka debug log. Okay, and in that you will see both the if you have enabled both, so you'll see the Kerberos debug as well as SSL debug. Okay, how do you debug SSL for the client? Then pretty simple. Same uh, Java debug SSL, but this time in Kafka OPTS, and uh, it will start printing. And you need to restart the Kafka client, and it will start printing the uh, SSL-related messages. One one of the most important thing to note about these debugging options is this note, this little note right in the bottom, which says debug the uh, disable the debug properties as soon as you are done with the troubleshooting. Otherwise, it is going to fill up your entire disk. And Kafka is pretty notorious. So in like uh, five or six hours, uh, once I uh, when I figured this out how to make this work, and I left it there at 2 a.m. Uh, by the by the morning, like uh, six or seven a.m., my entire 34 GB was filled with this, uh, with the debug logs. So it can be pretty notorious, right? So imagine like in six, five or six hours, 34 GB, right? That's a lot. So Make sure that you disable the debug uh, once you are done with the troubleshooting. Okay, this is not uh, the only things which are available. There are a few more things since Kafka is a uh, uh, Java implementation. It uses log4j, so there are a few more things available that uh, you can enable to get the uh, in more information out of the broker and the ranger, uh, like out, out of the broker and the ranger plugin if you are using ranger. So, for example, you want to enable. Uh, Ranger uh, log4j. Your policies are not working, right? And you, it is. You are just all you are getting is this user is not authorized to, or user does not have permission to consume at this resource, right? Something like that. How? What do you do to debug that? How do you figure out what is wrong? You have given a policy. It's not working. What do you do? You enable the Ranger debugging for Kafka by specifying the uh, log4j for the Ranger packages, which is the ORG Apache Ranger, and you set it for debug. Set this in the log4j property, uh, either in Ambari or in uh, manually on the system, and give it a restart. Right, you'll start seeing the more log4j debug for Ranger. You can s you can actually see how your policies are being evaluated and how your policies are being applied. What is the decision access denied or allowed? E everything you can see clearly. Similarly, if something is wrong at the broker level, that your message passing is not happening, clients are not uh, uh, being connected, or something else, you can actually enable the first one, which is the uh, broker log 4 g and that will start printing you more interesting information about the broker. And same for the client. So client one is actually really useful, the last one. And this is uh, when you are trying to connect via a consumer or producer to a Kafka broker and it is not working for some reason. The logging options uh, you will find in the tools log4j, not the log4j like the other two, tools-log4j. And uh, you set this to debug and to std error, and you'll start seeing the uh, more information on the console. 
okay so this is how to like uh, how to troubleshoot right how do you troubleshoot each and individual subsystem depending on what is failing right and what is how, uh, how does it look like when you enable kerberos debug let's say for example so this is this screenshot is just an example of when you enable kerberos debug this is what you uh, can expect to see so you can all these lines with the greater than are the uh, debug output that will that is telling you that how java is reading your key tab or the ticket cache and what it is trying to look into what it is trying to uh, do and this is more this is just a one screenshot there's more to it like which server principle it is trying to connect to what happened after the authentication whether did it go through or not you'll find all the information here all right and this is my favorite part whenever something is wrong with kafka the first thing that i try to do is is it working with the console consumer or producer okay so console consumer producer is just like a a pretty simple client server program that we used to write in our graduation uh, program right that uh, you have a socket client and a socket server you open the uh, server and you try to connect and see whether it is working this is somewhat similar to that in which uh, in this there's something called as console consumer and there's one uh, another client called uh, console producer which is trying to connect to a Kafka topic of course producer is producing some data so it's like a, a whatever you're typing on the console goes to the topic and stays there and if you run a cons console consumer on the other hand the con and give the same topic name like minus minus topic it will try to read the messages which are uh, available in the topic and it will display so it's kind of a um, echo server if you have uh, programmed one in back in the days right so so yeah couple of caveats that uh, while creating the kafka topic uh, you need to be uh, uh, you need to be creating that as a kafka user so you need to su as kafka user and then only create why is that required why 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 do we need that because when you are running in a kerberos system the kafka create topic api script is actually using the kerberos key tab okay and that kerberos key tab is actually the kafka service key tab and the only person who has access to the kafka service key tab in your system is kafka user so that is why you need to su as kafka user and then only you can uh, create a topic well uh, i i know uh, many of you would say uh, that's not true you can actually uh, copy the kafka service key tab to wherever whichever node you want and you can <coughs> run it from there yes of course you can do that but uh, as one of the uh, corner point of uh, kerberos security you should not mess with the service key tab right you should not uh, transfer and bring your service key tab around so they are pretty important so let's not do that and let's try to log into the the node where they are available and as the user uh, to whom they are available and use that that's why i highly recommend to use the kafka user okay and when you are producing there are couple of more things that you need to uh, take care of when you are producing you need to uh, give the user permission to describe and publish okay and uh, uh you also need to if you are running uh, in kerberos environment you also need to have a ticket before you can run this console uh, producer uh, command right console consumer as well you need to the same uh, same things are required you need to have a ticket and this should be describe and consume actually so this one so you need to give a describe and a consume uh, uh consume permissions to the user and whom you are running uh, whom you are trying to run this consumer as and then it will be able to uh, get into the uh, um, consumer mode connect to the kafka broker over kerberos transfer the information over ssl and get you the result right so this is one uh, a good way to uh, deal with the uh, to uh, t not to deal with to troubleshoot actually the what is wrong with your kafka subsystem so and most effective as well in my opinion <coughs> all right so it's time to have a look at the most uh, common errors right so the 
since uh, I work for support and so we do get into a lot of security uh, uh, cases with lots of Kafka uh, which are uh, uh, um, more uh, related to Kafka which uh, wherein people have enabled Kafka uh, sorry enabled Kerberos enable SSL and again it is not working and they don't know what to do how to figure out so couple of things that we can uh, do it uh, straight away is the a uh, couple of the error messages that are pretty common, that are pretty obvious, and uh, that is uh, uh, like few of them are like logging exception, right? So more often than not, you will see the uh, first one, which is the logging exception, followed by some messages, right? The example messages is the second one, or there could be any any other messages after logging exception. If you see a logging ex exception be 100 percent sure that it has something to do with jazz configuration jazz is now what is jazz right jazz is the uh, java implementation for pam okay now don't ask me what is pam <laughs> so pam is uh, pam is the one where you use the uh, where you have the pluggable uh, authentication modules you can stack one uh, on top of one uh, another and you can have uh, you can authenticate your users right so java uh, uh, achieves the same thing by use of jazz and those of you uh, uh, those who have worked with the uh, uh, in the kerberos uh, system especially with the zookeeper or kafka you will know uh, uh, how to uh, write a, a correct jazz file right so jazz file is nothing but an input to the java program which is doing a uh, Kerberos ticket for you, right? Which is taking a Kerberos ticket for you. So the Java program will just make use of this JAS file and try to get a ticket on your behalf, like the way you do it via K in it. Okay. So if you are getting a login exception, definitely something is wrong with that JAS file. What could go wrong depends on the message that you are getting. For example, if you are getting could not login, client is being asked for a password. What does that mean? Client is being asked for a password. Why? Because we have Kerberos. So why are we uh, even uh, uh, needing a password? We should not be. Because Kerberos is uh, for the same very reason that once you have the Kerberos ticket, you should uh, be given access, right? So if you have, if you are seeing this error, client is being asked for a password, there could be only two things which could go wrong. One, either the ticket is not found. Again, it is related to JAS. So either the ticket is not found. That means you forgot to do the uh, key in it before submitting the command. Or you were trying to use the key tab based login uh, via JAS. And that key tab is either missing or is not accessible to the user who you are trying to run as. So, uh, so if you are getting client is being asked for the password, meaning that the uh, login that the JAS that the Kerberos information that was given in the JAS like either use the key uh, either use the Kerberos ticket or the key tab is not working and command is f uh, the Java is falling back to uh, uh, ask a password manually and there's no way for a program to wait and ask for the password that's why client is being asked for the password but there's no way to enter one that's the meaning of that right another very uh, common error is like the PKI path building failed, which PKI X path building failed, which literally means that you have messed up with your trust stores. So either you don't have a trust store or you have set it up correctly, or it is defaulting to the JDK's trust store, which you have not paid attention to. So either of these three, but definitely it has to do with the trust store. Okay. So, and, or it could be trust store permissions as well, right? The user that you are trying to uh, run as does not have permission to the trust store that you are trying to uh, feed here. So, most of the errors uh, uh, are related to the user authentication and authorization. I could add few more like uh, uh, you have a ranger policy, but you are not able to, uh, still you are not uh, able to access your resources. So, those things can also be the part of this, but uh, at the higher level they belong to the authentication or authorization problem so the most of the common errors in terms of security that we see are obviously authentication and authorization uh, problem and these problems can definitely be resolved using the <coughs> the troubleshooting tips that i gave earlier okay so
with that and uh, this is the last slide for the day and for the summit that uh, some tips and tricks and do's and don'ts from the support trenches so the first and foremost one my favorite if you don't have kerbals you don't have security this is the number one thumb rule that you need to understand that if you don't have kerbals you don't have security at all right so i know kerbals setting up kerbals is not easy so but believe me all the pain all the time and effort that you put in setting up the kerbals uh, system will uh, is well worth it right so so do that right another thing that i uh, hear from the customers from the uh, uh, from the people on the field is one when you have uh, if you have ssl you are good to go you don't need anything else no that's not true ssl is only half of the story okay you need to have along with ssl you need to have authentication so uh, if you remember my tables right so if you have uh, only having ssl is not letting you do the authentication and the authorization like a user level authorization so both of them are missing only thing is available is the wire encryption so that's not the right uh, condition to be in so you need to have uh, ssl you need to have authentication along with ssl okay and uh, next one is like uh, i have uh, authentication i have set up kerberos and i'm done i don't need ssl or anything of that sort again not true because of the same because of uh, this table we know that only having kerberos or any kind of authentication will can uh, le like let you use the sasl but sasl plain text and in that case you will not get the wire encryption so you are still sending your secrets and the data over the wire in plain text anyone can see that right so that's again not recommended at all so the point being uh, using any of the sasl mechanism without ssl is dangerous you can use it but uh, it's not recommended right and the last one being uh, we uh, as in hotonox we highly recommend to use apache ranger for uh, large deployments where your user base is very big where you are uh, like you have lots of group you can uh, write smart policies dynamic policies using the uh, groups and the user information uh, your enterprise uh, user information that is so definitely recommended the apache uh, ranger for authorization so you can use the uh, kafka ecl there is no problem with that but the as the scale increases the manageability of the that uh, author authorization subsystem uh, reduced drastically right so ranger is the one which is recommended all right so with that uh, we are i uh, will open up for the uh, question and answers a uh, couple of uh, colleagues that i have been working uh, with to get the uh, their inputs on this uh, slide that i i pre just presented hugo deepna kate hasus they are here and uh, yeah thank you very much for your inputs and help yes please uh, will future the uh, kafka based sl and ranger sl be compatible uh no so i don't think there there are plans to do that so they are two separate subsystem so they are not planning to merge those questions yes when you talked about the ssl option for host space yeah is that because uh, you're doing a two way ssl for to to make sure that that's compliant uh, yes that's a great question so the question is when we saw the ssl is it uh, is it doing a two way uh, uh, authorization or one way so it is definitely two way so that is why both uh, part both the parties client and server will require to have a trust store and key store setup so it is definitely two way one last question you said we have to use kafka user when we're doing create policy yes. is that because the way it was designed with zookeeper as well yes okay yes that's right so uh, for the data on the disk yes you mentioned we need to have work with the third party yes uh like uh, whatever is the uh, uh yeah so you can definitely use those and uh, make sure that uh, kafka subsystem has access to the uh, data right 
So they are pretty uh, opaque to the Kafka layer. You don't need to, uh, if you have set up at the, uh, at the service level or at the OS level, you don't need to worry uh, at the Kafka level then. So the uh, lower level subsystem sh would take care of that. Yes. So it's pretty, that's why it's pretty opaque to the uh, Kafka, so yes. Can you configure a Hadoop group mapping for Kafka? Uh, Hadoop group mapping for Kafka. Mm, I have not seen any options as such. Like you have uh, the uh, kind of group mapping you have for name node and uh, Right, yes, the one in the core side. I don't know that, I, like I'm not aware of if there is uh, such group mapping is available. I'll have to check, I'll have to check, yeah. Any more questions? Looks like you have a question. It will? Yes, because I know for a fact that uh, for the user group mapping, the uh, 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 Kafka subsystem would fall back to the whatever is the OS one, which is the SSSD or anything else. But I'm not sure if you have an option to specify your own group mapping like you have in name node. Yes, yes, it, it may. We'll, we'll have to check. All right, so thank you very much, everyone. And yes, thank you. Have a great day.